What's up, Jags fans? We are live after whew, it was a stressful little, game. A little close for comfort, but a 31 to 21 victory over the Indianapolis Colts. Indi- in Indianapolis, I think we have we've only won there once in the last nine times. Mm-hmm. Last time was in 2017. But if you look at the screen right here, we are the only team that did not lose in the AFC South this week. Titans lost to the Saints, Texans lost to the Ravens. And the Colts lost to us. And if you watch Thursday Night Football, the Chiefs lost to the Lions. So we are uh, gearing up for quite a week, too. But <laughs> let's talk about week one first. That was stressful. Um, yeah, just, especially because... Weird game. We we know as Jags fans how we felt coming into this year. The expectations were astronomical through the roof like they've never been before. And... I know we don't haven't had the history where we were able to come into a game expecting something like that, but the fact that we have a competent QB and coach pair that with a number one wide receiver in Calvin Ridley, also something we've never had before since the nineties. I felt like it was warranted to come in here and be like, Hey, we should be able to dominate a team that has a quarterback that's only played 13 games in his football career. But it was a close game throughout. It definitely made us shiver to our cores, and we're just happy to come out here with a W. But Because we found a way to win. Yes, we did find a way to win. In the Jacksonville social page, they are self-aware, and they know exactly how that felt watching that game. But the second drive, it was, it was perfect. We had four – it was either four or five passes to Calvin Ridley in one drive, and we go down, we march down the field in nine plays and score a touchdown – and it felt like after that drive, you know, the first one was three and out. And the second drive is like, okay, they got their stuff together. So they should be able to do that, you know, the next drive, next drive. Just keep doing it, you know. But no, hit a wall for like the rest of the game. And it was very frustrating. Tough to run the ball. The, the Colts D-line really manhandled our O-line. I hope that is not a sign of things to come uh, this season. Yeah, that was. Shit, we had a scare with Sheriff going down. Yeah. He came back in, though, thinking we we cannot afford another O-line injury at all. Uh, Colts D-line was getting a lot of pressure all game. It caused that fumble, which was, oh, my gosh, get there. But I couldn't believe that play. But it, it was frustrating that we kept running the ball and having no success with it. And we preseason games were like, oh, Tank Bigsby, ETN. We should, we should have a two-headed monster in the backfield. And we still do. It it's just was super ineffective against the Colts' D-line. They, they stuffed everything, and it just ended up where we were getting a couple runs that actually did go our way. And that's, that's football. You know, you need a couple plays to go your way to win the game. But for the most part, nine times out of ten of the runs, they were getting stuffed at the line, and we, we need to keep throwing the ball. We needed to keep throwing the ball against these Colts because it was working. Trevor Bro, was – Calvin really with – he, I think, led all NFL receivers in receptions and receiving yards. I could be off because Justin Jefferson plays in the league. But the fact that Calvin Ridley, oh, my gosh, the Broncos just started the game off with an onside kick. Anyway, <laughs> the fact that Calvin Ridley had 90-something receiving yards in the first half. Yeah, just the first half. After not playing for two years is crazy. And I want to shout out UCF Jaguar who said, the fact that we can play like that and win by double digits says something. And I totally agree. While we played a rookie quarterback and rookie head coach, we just were kind of weird, like trying to run the ball. That Colts D line was stuffing every run up until the end when Travis Etienne was able to bounce off, bounce the, out yeah. off of a like run, another run, yet another run that was stuffed, mm-hmm. bounced out and ran in for the touchdown. But before that, there was nothing. Like our longest run was probably by Trevor for yeah, like 13 15 yards. 15 yard first down game. But the fact that runs were getting stuffed, and then when we tried the pass, O line was not really holding up that well. And we found a way to get Calvin probably over 100 yards. Yeah, he had 101. Yeah, and found a way to win. Um, that w- by by 10. Yeah, that's uh, that's exciting. Get to 31, highest scoring team in the league in the NFL this yes. season. <laughs> the Jaguars, your Jacksonville Jaguars, lead the NFL in scoring. Say that out loud. Next highest will be 49ers, who played the Steelers. Probably a better defense, but we still lead the league. In scoring, how many of the Lions scored? They didn't get the 30. No, that was a low scoring game. Uh, 21. Michael in the chat says, Thoughts on Tank Bigsby? <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he was rough out there. He, he was rough. The the miss, the drop that led to the pick was tough. And then the picking up the ball 
and not having the awareness like those are hard lessons to learn in a regular season when the when when it matters um he did learn not to fumble on the goal line in the preseason yeah. so we got that out of the way but too bad we didn't have one of those situations like picking up a sack fumble of Trevor and I don't know what he's supposed to do there to give himself up I guess fall to the ground but he definitely didn't think the ball was live that aggravated me so much yeah. just all the players just staring at it yeah like, guys that was that fumble play was one of those plays that a, a Jags team of old would do it coming into the season it's like I thought we were done with things like that and just to see that happen Trevor just fumbling the ball it falling right into Tang's hands he thinks the play's dead uh Buckner knocks it out and then takes it back and everyone's just standing around you're supposed to play the whistle y'all should know that and then it was Colt that play made the Colts take the lead and we it took us a while to get the lead back so after that play it just felt like all the energy was gone from us because that was the first time the Colts actually took the lead in that game and it was for a mistake that the Jags did nothing that the Colts did obviously they forced the fumble but like that was that was on us. Like it was nothing to the Colts that we gave up the lead, and it took so long to get it back. It felt like we were uh, gone in the water for a little bit at twenty one seventeen. Felt like that score was on the screen for a while. Yeah, this is a fun tweet. <laughs> Jacks have the best record in the NFL. <laughs> High scoring team though. Um, shout to uh, the commenters real quick. Jaguars nine hundred four. Uh, D Eric. Um, M. Emirs, what up from LA? Um, it was always a Jags baby, yes, sir. Press Taylor should be embarrassed. I mean, <laughs> tr I guess. I mean, there was a point where I was like tweeting about Press Taylor and I was not happy. Like all those runs in the middle when yeah. they kept getting stuffed. But like he did put up, like we did put up 31. Points. Yeah, we did, we did put up 31 points. And how was Josh Allen getting three sacks? Yeah. What? Yo, speaking of Josh Allen, was all over the field today. He's playing for that contract for sure. I hope we can keep that up all year. I love that we were able to win by 10, not play very well, and still have a lot to improve on. Mm -hmm. And our, our defense did – they gave up a lot of yards to Anthony Richardson, but they made plays when it mattered. Uh, they stopped on fourth down. Like Colts were stopping us on fourth down. Our defense was stopping them on fourth down right back. So, of course, we gave up some, we, we gave up some plays, but they also made some plays as well, and that's how you're able to stay in a football game can't just keep giving up yards, yards, yards. You actually got to make a play when it does matter. Like that Tyson Campbell interception. He made that interception and we go down and we score and we go up by 10. It's, it's defensive moments like that. So if we don't have like a stout defense, like teams like the 49ers, it's okay if they're making plays that can get us a win and allow our offense to get the momentum to go down there and score and extend the lead that we have. So yeah, we have some improvements to make. It's week one. We got the win. That's what we should be happy about getting the win and getting 31 points with how we with how we even played out there. So we should all just take a deep breath and be yeah, like, let's, wow. let's let's <laughs> let's remember how Jaguars teams of old have performed in Indianapolis. Like we said when we started this, uh the Jags, this is a, the highest scoring. Uh the Jags have never scored 31 points or more in Indianapolis ever. Uh, I do think our O line is in trouble though. <laughs> and another thing like o-line is in trouble but we still, still put up 31 yeah but yeah um cam robinson comes back i don't know who's i guess he's gonna replace walker little i mean deforest Buck, buckner had like his way with from walker, what i could yeah. tell a lot of times he's a good player but he's not uh nick bosa who we'll be seeing this year tj watt chris jones who hopefully will not sign by the time we play this <laughs> use here's uh anthony richardson's pick to We've been waiting on this on him to throw a pick all yeah. game, and then uh, Tyson Campbell came came away with it. We should we should have known that he wasn't the the throws he was making past the line of scrimmage were super inaccurate. Everything they were throwing was pretty short, including that touchdown pass. Is that a Zay Jones from the locker room? Oh, no, that was, that was uh, an old pick. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, that touchdown screen pass, like he was just throwing a lot of. He's just taking what the defense gave him. <laughs> Never a doubt. <laughs> Very relatable. That was your, that was that, that's Andy's face, man. Yeah. Andy is the most pessimistic fan to watch a game with. I kind of like keep it level, but I'm not one of those overly optimistic fans where I'm just like, oh, we just need to stop. Defense will get a stop. I'm not, 
I'm not like that, but I'm also not the guy that's like, oh, it's over. We're done. We're <laughs> we're cooked. We're we're not even gonna make the playoffs. He didn't say that, but I'm just I think- exaggerating with how Andy reacting when I'm watching the game with him. I do think we had, I haven't, obviously we had like red zone here, but I think from what I've seen red zone in our game, obviously I watched more of our game. Trevor to Zay Jones is the best throw and catch of this, of the season so far. Yeah. That, that was, was wild. That was an insane we, throw. We tweeted that clip. We we're watching live on our YouTube channel and streaming it. We just were all just speechless. Fingertip catch. Silent. Zay Jones makes a lot of those catches, man. And just seeing it, seeing it in slow motion is even crazier because the fact that he's able to catch it on his fingers, bring it in with control, and maintain possession throughout the fall, all in as fast as that happens, is just insane. <laughs> Keeping his eyes on the ball while fi- falling and diving for it to catch it, while the defender is kind of pulling out his shoulder pads. Just an insane player, Zay Jones is underrated for sure. And he's our wide receiver like four, like our fourth receiving option. That Evan Ingram catch down the sideline was sick. Yes, both both of those guys just have amazing hands. And the fact that Christian Kirk wasn't even used that much in this game and we put up 31 points just goes to show you a lot about our offense. Yeah. Christian Kirk had one catch for nine yards, guys. One catch for nine yards. And Christian Kirk was our main our main receiver last year. He was the one getting all the deep balls. We had Calvin Ridley and now he's just like we we have Calvin Ridley. Okay, but we have Christian Kirk just in case that's not working out. It's it's going to be a crazy year. And first bleach report stream I was like we could score 40 a game. Well, we're pretty close. 9 points away from my average that I'm calling. You know what? I looked up the other day how much the or I tweeted, you probably saw it. The Broncos in 2013 averaged 38 points a game. 38? Isn't they averaged? <laughs> like the Chiefs last year averaged like 27, 28. Yeah. The Broncos averaged 38, 38 points a game. My gosh. Uh, going back to your comments, uh, someone said, I really hope Press ain't calling the games all year. That's, I don't know. Those runs up the middle were tough. Like, why, why do you keep doing that? But then when they came out, that Press... Uh, Doug said that Press was calling all the plays all season last year in the second half. He's like, well, that's when we were the best. So let's see how he does. We'll see how next week goes. Um, but I do like when Doug does a little uh, glasses down here and looks at his playbook. <laughs> Locks in. Yeah. Like that meme where the uh, guy leans forward yeah. with the controller. Yeah. That's Doug's version. Uh, what do you think about the D-line pressure? I mean – the D line got more pressure than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting four sacks, which I think is what we got. Yeah, which Prize Picks was on the money with that. They were. They said three sacks over under, more or less. Take it or leave it. And I said less. There, so. there were a lot of instances still though where, but I, I think that's more of a, uh, because of Anthony Richardson's ability to escape the pocket that we couldn't close on him. I feel like if we had more of a. Jared Goff type standing back there that's not really willing to run the ball or move around in the pocket that we could have probably finished some sacks, but we should add way more than what we had. I thought we were getting pretty good pressure on him uh, during this game, but Josh Allen, shout out to him, man. He was all over the field making tackles all over the Oh, he had a hit stick on some yeah, running backs. Stick. He, Devin Lloyd had a great tackle that they threw a penalty for. I thought that was a nice, clean, solid hit. We We had a lot of great tackles out there. I can't remember an instance where there really was like, missed tackles outside of you know trying to get anthony richardson down in the pocket while he's scrambling which is a tall task for anybody even a professional football player he's a big guy man so but i thought it was pretty good i thought it was pretty good all around the only complaint i really have is is tank bigsby and all the running plays they did when it wasn't working like even that fourth and two call where they tossed it to the left in the shotgun and it got blown up immediately it's like if the passing game was working all game. I think they should have just stuck with the passing game because you have everybody out there at your disposal to throw to. One of my favorite plays that actually gave us the lead in the game, 24 to 21, was the Tank Bigsby run where oh, we thought it was blown up in the backfield. And Brenton Strange, he's kind of in front of him to the side a little bit, and he pulls him towards the goal line, and then he he stays up, and the offensive line collectively is just bringing him to the end zone and he gets a first down at the goal line and that set up a Jags touchdown by I, Tank Bigsby. So 
You came I, full circle. I think if the season ended today, we're we're first seed. Yes, we are. Because we're the highest scoring. We have a divisional win. And what more do you need? Box check, box check. Um, the most this has to be the most pivotal play in the game, though. Uh the Jamal Agnew punt return that he took off the hop. I think that was Oh, that was so clutch. I, I think that was third quarter. Like we needed a we needed a uh special teams play and Jamal Agnew that was great. Felt like fourth to me. Yeah, I'm I'm looking now. I'm trying to see. I think it was after it was a long Colts drive. No, it wasn't. So we have uh I put a poll out and ninety-two percent of the you believe that we're beating the Chiefs next week. <laughs> That's that post-game win. Oh, man. Hypeness. What do you think about the Chiefs game? Yeah, we definitely have a chance. I mean, I'm worried about that O-line. I'm worried about the O-line more than the D-line now, which is crazy. But the Chiefs secondary isn't, you know, all that. I feel like Trevor could get the ball out. If Chris Jones not playing, the Chiefs, you know, pass rush is going to be – Probably worse than what the Colts was tonight or today. But we're one to know, and I'm not going to go into the Chiefs game acting scared. I understand it's Mahomes, but we're putting up 31 points, and the Lions are able to move the ball on them. With the guy that doesn't really rush much, I feel like we have a way better opportunity to beat the Chiefs than the Lions did, and they they did it. I'm looking forward to it. I think in the at the end of the day, the fact that we got a road divisional win in week one, which is a weird week, and we put up the most points in the league, and we overcame some crazy plays. Like, take away the fluky defensive touchdown from them. Mm-hmm. We won 31 to 14. We're chilling. We and, and that's the score that I predicted. We're totally. <laughs> really? Well, it was like 30, 30 something, 13. That's, that's I thought they, good. I thought they would have two field goals and a touchdown, which they should have had. Like you, you're not predicting a fumble recovery <laughs> play like that. <laughs> I'm dead at some comments. Like NFL said we won, and then uh, Gators fan said they had to injure AR <laughs> to win. But it was like on the already. goal line, y'all are down by ten. <laughs> uh, I don't know how he's gonna if he keeps taking those hits, man. You're gonna get hit by by a big. Like by a big player, and it's gonna be, and it's gonna hurt, and he might not last the season. But they sure are running Anthony Richardson like, uh, like their season's on the line. Well, I think you would as well, because we saw the, some of the throws he had, and they were yeah, they were tough. They were pretty, he had a better were stat inaccurate. line than I predicted, but he uh, is inaccurate at times. Yeah, when it's, we're we're playing soft a lot, so. A lot of the times his receivers were open for five, six, seven yards, but he was just he was just taking them little short ones and the receivers were getting some yak yards. So that's a lot of what his stat line gets attributed to. But uh, he is a runner first, man. He is not going to be afraid to run it. He had so many positive rush plays for four, five, six yards. He didn't break that big one, though. No, I was expecting a big yeah. one. I was expecting like 20, 30, 40. Yeah, I was expecting one of those, you know, Justin Fields type, go the whole length of the field type runs. But it didn't happen. And it's because they, you know, they weren't going to let that happen. They're like, he can stay in front of us, but we're not going to let him get behind us. Because that's really all, like from the first game I'm seeing from Anthony Richardson in the NFL, that's all I saw that he was really good at was running the ball. I didn't see any kind of deep balls thrown at all from him and if they were they were overthrown and completely inaccurate which i keep reiterating because that's what that's why we expected the jags to blow this team out we didn't think anthony richardson was going to do anything so i take away the defensive touchdown 31 14 sounds like a blowout but certainly didn't feel like a blowout watching it um no they had they had a sweating man they had a sweat and i was uh talking about looking ahead to uh week two just a few days ago and Colts. I was really, I was really chalking up the L after we were down <laughs> by four. Yeah, Colts, Colts, y'all made me eat my words. You know, <sighs> I'm, I'm just glad my my Jags were able to uh, come through with that. But that speaking was, that was tough. of sweating, we will see you guys after week two when we report 
following Jags Chiefs after both of us will be at the game sweating our, I'll say tails off since we're on Bleacher Report, sweating our tails off. We will be back here to analyze that game, which, oh my God, if we win and we go and we're 2-0 and with a divisional win and a Chiefs win, that'll be so good. For later in the year. For later in the year when we're trying to get the one seed. And Eagles just returned to pick six. All right, everybody. Yeah. I, thanks for joining. I just know that all the miscues and mess ups that we had in this game, they'll be fixed in practice. It's a long season. And I'm fully expecting the Jags to come out there next week and not have the same type of same thing with the Chiefs. They had a lot of drops in that Thursday night football game. I think both teams are going to come in here next week. They're going to clean up their play. We're going to have a solid game. Back Travis Kelsey game. will be playing. Yeah. Good for my fantasy, though. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Um, I'm going to end it now.